Welcome back to Sunless Skies 2. What? That wasn't a joke. I honestly don't know why I said that. Oh, it's probably because I'm also playing Pathologic 2. Um, yeah, welcome to the sequel to Sunless Skies. It looks very much like the first game. A little bit weird, but oh well. In the last episode, we went to the Behringer. I think that was about here? It's... Oh, no. Here. It's marked on the map. Wow, that was a disaster. Let's try that again. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we visited the wreck... Well, it looks like a wreck, but it's not actually a wreck of the Behringer over here. Some people hanging out there, part of the Liberation of Night. This episode, there's three big places I can go that I want to go and have business at. Langley Hall, Caduceus, and the House of Rods and Chains. I'm thinking I want to wait till I have more points of inspiration to go back to Langley Hall. I think I only have one or two. So I'm, I'm going to hold off on that. <clears throat> the House of Rods and Chains, I can absolutely do stuff there. Because the reason I didn't go there a while ago is because I wanted to get rid of some of my nightmares. Given that we were trying to seek audience with a son there. And now I have only two out of four nightmares, so I feel pretty confident doing that. However, I also think there's a significant chance it's going to leave something on my soul by going there. And Caduceus will not accept me if I have anything on my soul. I'm pretty sure. I'm not exactly sure how it works. I assume you need to have a completely clear soul, but it's possible that it just needs to be, like, not too dirty. You know, maybe you can have one status effect, but not two or three or something. I don't know, but let's just play it safe and go to Caduceus while I have a clear soul since I've just visited Kirillin a little bit ago. And I, actually, we don't really have a quest to do here. There is the one for the feline eccentric, but I want to do all the nice options for the cats, give them good places to go rather than driving them off, and Caduceus is the bad option for one of the cats. The drive them off option, so I actually don't want to do that. But. Anyway, even though I don't have business there, it's an entirely new port that I have not explored at all. So I'm sure we'll find some business. Let's kind of explore this dark region as we go to Caduceus. Kind of shoot a little bit more northwards. <clears throat> My ship appears to be moving at a normal speed. Good. Ugh. Damn, freaking shotgun. Oh, damn, I blew it off off camera. I do need to repair my ship. Let's scavenge its plating. It does say the higher your hearts, the more whole you will restore, which is going to be very bad for me. 14 whole? Hey, that's. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, uh, what do I have on? Oh, I have the right stuff, good. I was worried I hadn't gotten rid of my hidden compartment stuff, so that I was running on a much lower max HP, but no, I'm good. Yeah, max is 111. Do I want to mess with that clotted knight? Yeah, sure. All right, bye. Didn't have to fight anything, yay.
I think I found this back there. I'm not going back for that. I bought more fuel than supplies, by the way, because Caduceus only sells supplies. Here we go. In unexplored territory now. I can go in between this landmass, but I don't know, it might just be a solid thing. No, we can go in between. I feel like this game is going to last forever. It is an incredibly long game. It's an incredibly huge game. There's so much to do in it. It's amazing, really. I've been thinking about when am I going to finish it? How close am I to the end? I mean, I must be pretty close, right? I'm pretty far along on the truth ambition, and I've explored almost all of almost every region. It's mostly just some more quest stuff to do. But then also, there's another big update. You remember there was the Wayfarer update that entirely redesigned Albion? Well, as of recording, it's uh, June 7th right now, and on June 12th, the Vagabond update is coming out, which the big feature for that is that it's going to add an entirely new companion, the Vagabond. So that's going to be a whole nother quest line to do. It's like, maybe they'll keep adding content too fast for me to finish the game and I'll never be able to finish it. <sighs> Not that I'm complaining, I love it. They have munitions. There's no reason to buy those yet, is there? I don't think so. The winds of elsewhere, the winding hillside paths are meandering and willful. A wind picks up, carrying a scent of honey and a soothing sibilance. It blows from the caves. A mirror shard or explore the dark side of Caduceus. I think I did this once before. And I think I did the mirror shard. I don't remember what it gave me, though. Let's explore the dark side of Caduceus. The devils do not care to set foot here. Ruins litter this side of Caduceus, though their purpose has been lost to time. Columns stand proud amongst ancient rubble. Ancient frames hold broken mirrors, but the wind is warm and lazy, unlike the harried, anguished gusts of the sky. Why are there so many winds around here? Does this place have a connection to Parabola? The Place of the Rose a temple, garlanded with incarnadine flowers and wreathed with thorns, sits at the apex of Caduceus. It's drowsy with the scent of roses, though you can see none. Poets, artists, and musicians lounge in groups on the marble floor. A woman, crowned in thorns, sits on a white throne. She drums her fingers on the arm. You unlocked this, being able to talk to the Thorn Maiden, by not having any cold and not having any lightless. From her throne, she watches all. Her crown is thorned, her stave coiled with snakes. 
her eyes are quiet as an ox's. As you approach, she raises a hand, bedecked with rings of white sapphires. Whether she is bidding you approach or refrain is unclear. The thorn maiden considers you, then approximates a smile. Her fingers still tap against the marble arm of her throne, in time with a drum from below. How may I serve? she asks. Her voice resonates like beaten bronze. Let's ask about Caduceus. If anyone knows about this place, it's her. A refuge of sorts. Her voice is without any affect. The intonation is hollow. I found Caduceus not long after I arrived in Eleutheria. I was frustrated with the methodologies of Winter's Reside. Where was the poetry? Where the beauty in all the horror? Her fingertips dance as she speaks. The devils were here before me. They were wearing those masks when I arrived. This temple was once something else, something important to them. They reclaimed it, though for a new purpose. She trails off, having lost interest in your inquiry. What a strange person. The intonation's hollow. They just, like, they're giving me information and being polite, but it seems like they're not really there at all and don't really care. So these people, or, or this person at least, was like a, uh, they splintered off from Winter's Reside. So they were a part of the Liberation of Night? How is she? She seems restless. Is she bored? Her eyes widen. Is it obvious? Her tone doesn't change. The waiting between rites becomes more intolerable. All these people, she gestures, her bracelets are set jangling, venerating me, but all they care for are the roses. I'm a link in the chain, not the pearl in the crown. She sighs and looks away. What's going on here? Cannot ask that. You must not only participate in the rites, but learn some of their mysteries. Leave her. You've heard enough. There are other diversions here. Investigate the temple. What is Caduceus? Marble statues of devils line the aisles. They have wreaths over their horns. Their lips are dabbed scarlet as sin. Their eyes are the colors of ash and sunlight. The detail is breathtaking. Their lyres and lutes, flutes and fiddles, drums and dulcimers are so perfectly carved that, but for the material, they could be real. Frescoes depict a troop of musicians marching towards a slender mirror. Pipers, flutists, drummers, all. Statues of serpents coil over the musicians. Thorn bushes, bereft of roses, encircle the chamber. The plants are tended by devils in crimson masks. These devils are the rose binders of Caduceus. Within the space bounded by the bushes, the Bohemians make their art, all of it on the subject of roses. A troop of musicians marching towards a slender mirror. This place is definitely related to Parabola. I don't get the roses, though. Let's descend to the caverns. Beneath the temple, the mountain on which Caduceus rests is tunneled through with caves. A drumbeat, slow but steady, sounds from below. Underneath the dome of Caduceus is a warren of caverns, a labyrinth of caves, walled with slabs of volcanic black glass, burrow their way through the rock. A steady drumbeat thrums through the walls, echoing from somewhere deeper. Volcanic black glass. That's another name for obsidian, right? So the walls are made of obsidian? That would look beautiful. Let's follow the rose binders. Two rose binders, a devil and a devil-s, wait in the main cavern, their eyes like coals in the dark. The devil-s beckons you to follow her. You're let down darkly gleaming passages, heading deeper under the main temple of Caduceus. The devil walks at your side. He occasionally uses his 
fiercest to strike the ground as if testing the depth of your descent. You emerge into a cavern lit by moonish light pouring through a crack in the roof. A broken temple stands before a pool of dark water. The Deviless bids you to kneel by the pool and drink. So I think I managed to get this far before, but I could not drink deeply, which meant that I couldn't continue because I, I guess I had either cold or lightless. So maybe, maybe it's not that you can't have any soul flaw, it's just that you can't have these in particular. Drink deeply. The water is clear, reflecting only the pale rays of light and the thorned masks of the rose binders. As you kneel, the Deviless places a red cloth around your eyes. The Devil touches your forehead with a thyrsus as he pushes you towards the water. You feel the water lapping against your chin, your mouth, your tongue. It tastes rich as wine, velvet, smooth and wild. The drumbeat here, with your ear pressed against the rock, is louder. It grows louder still, insistent and incessant. The cavern vibrates with it. The Deviless pulls you from the water. The drummer deems you worthy. She smiles, bright as a new moon. You may participate in the mysteries of our Arbor... Arboretum? Yeah. Arboretum. You've been admitted into the mysteries of Caduceus. Follow the beating of the drums. The sound is steady like the pulsing of a heart. Following the sound leads you in what feels like circles. You travel between cave after cave, the tunnels narrowing like a throat as you go deeper. The drums sound on, a steady funerary beat. You're forced to cleave to a wall, slick with dripping condensation, for the tunnel here has the width of a wicked king's spine. As you do, the drums cease for a moment, and you hear a sound like a finger tapping on glass. When you emerge from the thin cave, you find yourself in the large, wide cavern where you began. The drums stop, and you hear the sound, a sound like a finger tapping on glass. Um... Follow the beating of the drums... again? The same thing happens. Um... Again? <laughs> same thing happens again? One more time. Okay. Return to the temple. You've lingered too long in the dark. Back to the marble and the frescoes and the devils and rose masks. Back to the place where the roses do not fall. Oh, now we can do stuff out here. I thought we would just have to go deeper and deeper into the caves. Hmm. Unlocked when right of... I have no idea how to pronounce that or what it means. Prorhesis? Okay, prorhesis? I, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, because I can't find a definition in the typical dictionaries that have a little, like, pronunciation audio thing. But I found a definition somewhere, and prorhesis literally means proclamation. And then it goes on to say, Paresis is originally a means of blood feud against somebody accused of a bloody deed. I don't entirely understand what that second part means. Originally a means of blood feud. Paresis is a means of blood feud? What does that mean? Like, it means somebody proclaiming that they're going to do a, like, take part in a blood feud? I'm not sure. For now, I'll just think of it as proclamation. Um, yeah, let's get a poor report. Would anyone take an interest in this languorous eatle? There are said to be mysteries to Caduceus. <laughs> there definitely are mysteries. 
an isolated temple approached by a winding pilgrim road. Roses fall about the ruins on the temple approach, but none within the temple walls. Here devils in rose masks tend flowerless shrubs. Poets and musicians write rhapsodies on roses that never appear. A woman known as the Thorn Maiden presides over it all, while in the caverns below the temple drums sound in the dark. Poets whisper to you of rites performed by the Thorn Maiden, of sunlight somehow brought into Eleutheria, of revels done when the roses fall. Participate in the Rite of the Rose. What do I need for that? I need three moments of inspiration. Oh, dear Lord. Rip Langley Hall. And what do I need for this? Bohemia 3. Oh, I think I could probably get that. Can I? Bohemia might have been from the Incognito Princess, which I don't have anymore. Establishment, villainy, villainy, academia, establishment, establishment, villainy. No, I can't. Hmm. Let's observe the rose binders at work. They rarely speak and refuse all assistance. The masked devils menace the greenery, encroaching on the temple with severe secateurs. That's some sort of weapon? Let me look that up, actually. It means a pair of pruning clippers for use with one hand. Marble walls crack with creeping vines and tumbling flora. They rip and crush with equanimity. Theirs is an uncompromising battle to prevent the temple's decay. Only the flowerless rose bushes are afforded mercy. These are trimmed and tended, primped and perfumed. As you watch, a deviless calls over a compatriot. They mournfully examine the coils of a bush gone gray. Eventually, and with a great deal of ceremony, they begin to uproot it. Explore the temple. It must predate London's entry into the High Wilderness. Corinthian columns line the processional, though their capitals bear budding roses rather than acanthus leaves. Devils unmasked re recur on the frescoes. Only the wall behind the throne has been left without adornment. The temple contains a multitude of shrines, scattered throughout the complex like links on a chain. Each holds a reliquary to a single figure. One is to the fiddler, another to the piper, a third to the drummer. The chorister and the violist. The rose binders treat these shrines with a reverence that borders on fear. Let's see if we can talk to the thorn maiden about anything else. I still can't ask what's going on here. I probably can't do anything more here without being able to do one of these things. Like participating in the Rite of the Rose. I need so much more inspiration. And to get inspiration, I need Eleutherian Mysteries. And to get Eleutherian Mysteries, I need to get port reports, do stuff find curators' eggs and sell them at Pan. Kind of kind of just do stuff in general, really. What if I go back down to the caverns? Follow the drums again. Anything different going to happen? No, we just got turned around again. Okay. Well, let's buy the deal of the munitions. Let's get a bunch of supplies. And let's head on over to the House of Rods and Chains. We have a son to see, and Mr. Barleycorn to talk to, and Mr. Benagerie to see as well. 
I never explored this horror, did I? I think I avoided it because I, when I came across it, my terror was super high. want to explore this little dark patch here. Or maybe I should just go straight for the horror. Hmm. Let's go for the dark patch and then over to the horror and then to the House of Rods and Chains. This is the Inklings, Captain, an engineer says, where bad ideas come from. The Inkling, like I have an Inkling kind of thing? Inkling? What a weird word. Now that I'm just saying it, like I never use it, but I know what it means, sort of. Oh, the touch of the skies. Um, additional ration of brandy to the crew. But now as I think about it, inkling... Oh, something is about to see me. I want to finish my thought before I fight it. An inkling sounds like... It sounds like a small creature made of ink, you know? An inkling? Oh, there you are. Hello? Ah! Bastard! If you're going to fight me, fight me. I'm just going to go. If they chase me, then I'll shoot them. What the fuck is this? Shit. No, wrong. Oh, whew. Wrong way. But it worked. Worked out. The, the halved. <sighs> B 
burn the remains. Let's do that to reduce terror. Good reduction, too. I didn't know the halved was just to hang it out here. Don't I have to go to Mr. Barleycorn to talk to the halved? Can I do anything with the halved directly? I'm I'm scared. Remember the halved has gone dark. It chose to plunge Elotheria into darkness. That's why, even though it's a sun, I guess it doesn't look very bright. Oh god, that's an eye. <laughs> the halved, the sun turned to night. Oh fucking hell. That's the first alive sun I've ever seen. Should I drive over it? Hmm. Alright. Alright, can't talk with it right now. Gotta make an appointment with Mr. Barleycorn. I haven't been back here for a while. I remember there's the rubbery men who like Amber, 